An attack on an Iranian police convoy Saturday in the country's restive southern province of Sistan and Balakestan killed at least 10 officers, authorities said. Details remain scarce over the attack in Goharku, some 1,200 kilometers southeast of the Iranian capital, Tehran. Initially, reports simply described an attack by miscreants without more information. But shortly after, Iranian state media said 10 officers had been killed. Halvash, an advocacy group for the Baluk people of Afghanistan, Iran and Pakistan, posted photos and video of what appeared to be a disabled truck painted with the green stripe used by Iranian police vehicles. One graphic photo shared by the group showed what appeared to be the corpses of two police officers in the front seat of the truck. Halvash said the attack appeared to target two security force vehicles and all those riding in them were killed. The truck appeared to have only damage from bullets, rather than any explosive being used. The state-run Erna News Agency said that Iskander Momani, the country's interior minister, ordered an investigation into the incident that it described as causing the martyrdom of a number of police. Authorities identified no immediate suspects for the attack, nor did any group claim responsibility. The assault came after Israel launched a major attack across Iran early Saturday morning. The Baluk regions across the three nations have faced a low-level insurgency by Baluk nationalists for more than two decades. Verifying information remains difficult in Iran's Sistan and Baluchistan, which for decades has been home to violence involving heroin traffickers. The province is one of the least developed parts of Iran. Relations between the predominantly Sunni Muslim residents of the region and Iran's Shiite theocracy have long been strained. Typical attacks involve hit-and-run assaults by militants in the region, like the Sunni militant group Jayish al-ADL, that kill a few security officials at a time. However, there have been mass casualty attacks by militants in the past. In April, gunmen wearing explosive vests attacked several sites in the province, killing 10 before security forces gunned down 18 militants. Last December, another assault killed 11 and wounded 8 others. Meanwhile, the Taliban said they are investigating reports that Afghan migrants had been killed by Iranian security forces in the region earlier in October, an incident that threatened to further strain relations between the nations. UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer said on Saturday Iran should not respond to Israeli airstrikes and he urged all sides to show restraint. He made the comments after Israel attacked Iran with a series of pre-dawn airstrikes Saturday in what it said was a response to the barrage of ballistic missiles the Islamic Republic fired upon Israel earlier this month. Speaking from the Commonwealth Summit in Samoa, Starmer said, I am clear that Israel has the right to defend itself against Iranian aggression. I'm equally clear that we need to avoid further regional escalation. Starmer also spoke about the importance of stability in the Pacific which he called a crossroads for global trade. That's why we're so committed to our AUKUS partnership. It's why our carrier strike group will be in the region next year. He also spoke about the need to provide finance for Commonwealth countries as a counterbalance to China's influence in the region. I've been making the case that the priority ought to be trade and investment and unlocking finance for Commonwealth countries, in order for them to build up the resilience they need. At the Gathering of Nations for the summit a debate about reparations for Britain's role in the slave trade has overshadowed talks. The UK has never formally apologized for its role in the trade and studies estimate Britain would owe between hundreds of millions and trillions of dollars in compensation to descendants of slaves. Asked about discussions on reparations, Starmer stressed that climate change was one of the most urgent issues at the summit. There is, as you rightly say, the paragraph in the communique about preparatory justice which does two things, he added. It notes calls for discussion and it, it agrees that this is the time for conversation. But I should be really clear here, in the two days we've been here, none of the discussions have been about money. Our position is very, very clear in relation to that.
Good evening, everyone, and can I apologize for keeping you waiting? Reparations would not be on the agenda. It seems they have made their way into the final communique. This is a live situation, and we are obviously monitoring it closely alongside our partners. I am clear that Israel has the right to defend itself against Iranian aggression. I'm equally clear that we need to avoid further regional escalation and urge all sides to show restraint. Iran should not respond. We will continue to work with allies to de-escalate the situation across the region. UK, uh, after you told me that people who also make an income from property of shares. This region sits on a geopolitical fault line. It is the crossroads for global trade, so our prosperity and security at home depend on stability here. And that's why we're so committed to our AUKUS partnership. It's why our carrier strike group will be in the region next year. And it's why, despite the fact that we've flown halfway around the world, the Royal Navy was already here in Samoa, waiting to greet us. I called the crew of HMS Tamar yesterday to let them know how proud we are of them. And I announced that we'll be doing more in the Pacific Island nations to reinforce maritime security. It shows, once again, our commitment to the region, to supporting free and open Indo-Pacific upholding our values and bringing new opportunities home to the United Kingdom. The, uh, the uh, election in July, your campaign was honest about three niche tax rises on private equity and private schools. And um, you're quite right to point to the fact that China is increasingly um, trying to be influential um, across Commonwealth countries and we need to be clear about our values uh, of democracy and the rule of law. Um, but also, I've been making the case that the priority ought to be um, trade and investment and unlocking finance for uh, com uh, Commonwealth countries um, in order for them to build up the resilience they need. This is finance from international institutions is the issue that's come up time and again in the last two days. Um, and um, how they access that finance to take some of the measures of resilience that they need to take. Again, something that's very pressing in islands like this because um, they are worried about the rising sea levels and therefore what, is the, what are the practical measures that they need to take now in order to guard um, against that. Um, Damaged relations with Commonwealth countries with your attempt at a hard line on this. Um, and today at the retreat, um, which was a retreat going on for um, six or now eight hours, I think, in the end, the theme for the day was chosen by the Prime Minister here in Samoa. Uh, and she chose resilience and climate. So I think that gives you a clear sense of um, the absolute priority here. And that's not surprising. You've spent some time here. You'll have seen just how vulnerable this island and similar islands are uh, to climate change. It is um, of paramount um, importance. There is, as you rightly say, the paragraph in the communique about um, uh, reparatory justice, uh, which does two things. It notes calls for discussion. Um, and it, agree, it agrees that this is the time for uh, conversation. But I should be really clear here, um, in the two days we've been here, um, none of the discussions have been about money. Um, our position is very, very clear uh, in relation to that. Thanks very much.